Good morning, children. The tale of Custard the Dragon, the poem which we started yesterday, and rather we had done it up to seventy percent also. So before we continue with the poem, let's again revise like what we did yesterday. So first of all, we discussed that it's a this poem, the tale of Custard the Dragon, is a ballad. Ballad is a song written in. It's a story which is written in a poem in the form of a poem which is rhymed. Okay, and secondly, it's about the heroic uh, uh, heroism or the courage of the main character. Right. Thirdly, uh, in this story, you know, in this very poem, we come to know about dragon who was considered a timid or a coward, coward by others, but basically he was a very courageous fellow who jumped to action when the real moment came. Okay, at the right time, he was able to prove his worth, but otherwise he doesn't make a show of it. Otherwise, he remains quiet about his abilities, and that is what the message of this poem is also. Like uh, then uh, we had read out like uh, here in this poem we come to know that there is a girl called Belinda who lived in a white house with other pets, and those other pets include a kitten who is named as Ink, and there is a mouse who is named as Blink, and then there is a, a dog, yellow dog, who is named as Mustard. And then there is another creature that is Dragon, who is named as Custard. And it is this Dragon who is considered to be uh, a coward. And uh, it is this very Dragon who proves to be actually courageous at the right time. So it is ab about the heroism, it's about the courage of Dragon, which this poem is all about. That's why it's a ballad, right? So we were talk talking about, uh, so when these people, you know, Belinda and all the other, Belinda and even these three creatures, they would always uh, make fun of dragon by calling them timid. And uh, they would even, uh, you know, uh, sarcastically uh, taunt him and all, but he would always keep quiet and would always go for a safe place that is a cozy place. Because these kinds of people don't indulge in uh, what we say, any disputes or these kinds of people don't indulge in proving their worth. They just do it. They don't speak out. So one day, uh, a pirate attacked this White House. So at that time, all these creatures, including Belinda, they were like uh, shocked. They were shell shocked and they could not do anything. Uh, and they all, you know, ran to the cozy corners to save themselves. So the, the very creatures and Belinda, those who used to be, uh, those who used to compare themselves to the uh, herd of uh, bears or to the tigers or to the lions, those all creatures, they ran and hid themselves in the cozy corners of the house. Whereas the dragon who used to sit in the co uh, cozy corners without uh, speaking much about his uh, you know, courage and all, that person rose to action and made the pirate run off. Okay, so we had read this much. So the pirate gaped at Belinda's dragon and gulped some grog from his pocket leg. So the pirate, when he saw this uh, death, uh, deathly or this ferocious dragon in front of him, the one who was snorting like an engine, uh, okay, the one who was uh, clashing and clinging and clattering uh, with all those, you know, ferocious sounds, then the pirate got so shocked, so surprised uh, that he kept on looking at Belinda's dragon with his mouth wide open and to seek some inspiration or to get some, you know, strength, he took a drink from his pocket and gulped it down. And uh, he fired two bullets. It's not that the pirate uh, could not do anything in front of the dragon. The pirate was also very ferocious, very dangerous one because he was uh, fully armed. So he also fired two bullets at the dragon, but those bullets, but he missed his shot. Okay, those bullets did not hit the dragon and uh, the custard gobbled him. So instead of the bullets hitting the dragon, it was the dragon who gobbled up, who consumed or who ate up the uh, pirate altogether. So he ate him up. So the point is that the dragon killed the pirate. 
Belinda embraced him. Mustard licked him. No one mourned for his pirate victim. Ink and blink in the glee did gyrate around the dragon that ate the pirate. So the moment this uh, uh, dragon proved to be victorious one, when he was able to outwit that, uh, what we call as pirate, then all these creatures, those who had been, uh, those who heaped a sigh of relief because their life had been saved by that dragon. So they all came and started pampering dragon. So Belinda, you know, uh, Belinda embraced him, hugged him and uh, thanked him for whatever he had done to save her. Mustard also started licking him because dogs are known for um, for flattering their masters, or for licking the masters. So no one mourned for his pirate victim. So at that time, they were so happy. They were happy and rejoicing over the fact that they had been saved by the dragon that they forgot to mourn the death of somebody who had been killed over there. Ink and blink and glee did gyre it. So even ink and blink, even the mouse and the dog, uh, even the uh, cat and dog also, you know, they forgot uh, everything uh, in uh, happiness in, and they started dancing about around the dragon that ate the pirate. So they even ink and blink started dancing around dragon who had killed or who had consumed the pirate. So this stanza is about the happiness of the four of those three creatures, including Brenda, at the uh, at the event when their life had been saved by the dragon. So they were so happy. Okay, but this happiness, this uh, pampering of dragon, was momentary. It didn't last long because the real egoist people, you know, the people those who uh, are actually very egoist and are proud of themselves, they cannot. Uh, uh, they cannot praise others for a long time. But presently up spoke little dog mustard. I would have been twice as brave if I hadn't been flustered. So flustered is confused. So now the dog spoke up first. He said like, uh, had, had I not been confused, then I would have done better. I would have been, I would have proved to be more brave than uh, dragon if I had not got, got confused. And up spoke spoke ink and up spoke blink, we would have been three times as brave, we think. So even the ink and uh, blink, they all started, uh, you know, uh, saying the same things that they would have been able to do three times better off than dragon uh, if the things had been in their favor. And Custard said, I quite agree that everybody is better than me. So even at this time, you know, Custard was not uh, annoyed. He didn't lose his temper. He did not... Uh, prove himself by uh, beating trumpets about his bravery. And he said, okay, I admit that uh, you could have been better than me. You could have been braver than me. So this is the equality of the real achievers. Okay, they don't uh, indulge themselves in, uh, in stupid arguments or in stupid, you know, uh, dialogues. So they better remain quiet. So, right, this is a very big lesson which we all need to learn in this science. Okay, where the people, you know, they indulge in stupid dialogues, okay, to prove their metal. So wherever you have to argue to prove your metal, that is not uh, the right place then. So there you better become quiet, right? So, and Custard said, I quite agree. So the Custard, the one who had been able to prove himself, he need not get any certificate to prove that he was very courageous. He had proved his courage. He had done it. Okay, our actions speak louder than what we speak. Our actions speak louder. So his action had been louder than his speech now. So he agreed to what the other words were saying. Belinda still lives in her little white house with her little black kitten and her little gray mouse and her little yellow dog and her little red dragon and her real Leo, true Leo, little pet dragon. So still, the time is over, the time, the time has elapsed, even after, after even, the time has gone, even now Belinda is living in the same house with the same creatures. So the repetition of the whole stanza is there and the repetition suggests, uh, so the re repetition is, a, you know, is a refrain where almost all these sentences have been, you know, lines have been repeated and the purpose is to tell 
like a human mentality doesn't change if earlier also people had been so there earlier also there had been such people who used to make a show of their achievements or they used to beat trumpets about their achievements through their words and earlier also there were people those who used to be uh, like a dragon those who used to uh, resort to quietitude instead of speaking up and even now those kinds of people are there so both kinds of people were there earlier also and the same kinds of people are there even now it's not that earlier uh, these kinds of people were not there or now those kinds of people are not there so these human mentality you know human psychology remains same that is a universal fact it's not that something uh, this belinda or these three creatures uh, what they stood for those values were there earlier also and now also because human psychology human emotions don't change so i'm coming to the point like how these all creatures are symbolic this uh, these creatures you know kitten mouse dog dragon belinda these are all symbolic creatures i'll come to this point afterwards so all these people you know they were still there and still uh, these uh, uh, some of these people you know keep on beating trumpets about their own achievements and some people like dragon still you know uh, uh, resorting to quietitude without uh, having the need to speak how brave they are or how courageous they are belinda is as brave as a barrel full of beards and ink and blink chase lions down the stairs mustard is as brave as a tiger in a rage but custard keeps crying for a nice safe cage so that is the ultimate reality of this world also still we people come across the people uh, still belinda kinds of people you know they remain uh, uh, talking about themselves as being brave like the group of bears okay uh even the uh, you know uh, the people who have no caliber the people those who are worthless like blink even a mouse who is otherwise uh, so insignificant so uh, powerless no strength he has but even then these kinds of people uh, keep uh, uh, proving themselves keep on uh, talking about themselves as being uh, you know as as the ones who are able to who can hunt lions and all so even the mustard the dogs kinds of people can also uh, they also have the guts to say that they are as powerful as a as an angry uh, angry tiger in the cage but custard kinds of people those who are actually brave those who are actually courageous they resort to remain quiet they don't indulge in gossiping or they don't indulge in announcing uh, their achievements or their uh, potential so the people those who are actually capable they resort to remain quiet because empty vessels make more noise it's not the full vessel which makes noise it's the empty vessels which make more noise and those who are actually uh, knowledgeable those who are actually capable those who are actually skilled they resort to remain quiet so children this was the poem uh, on the surface level so on the surface level this poem is about these these creatures belinda kitten mouse dog dragon but these all creatures are symbolic so what are they symbolic of here kitten mouse and dog they are all symbolic of the people those who are insignificant or incapable but they speak a lot about themselves as if they are the best ones whereas dragon is symbolic of the kind of people who are actually capable actually influential actually significant but they choose to remain quiet but they come to action when the right time comes up so the people those who speak a lot those who make a, a lot of noise those who uh, those who make big announcements about their courage and all that is that doesn't happen to be a fact okay so the point is that uh, don't guess get misled by what people say see what people do don't believe in hear says don't believe in what people say believe in what people do okay because action speaks louder than the words so let you be be action oriented people let us not just be the gossip mongers that is what the theme of the 
poem is and upon this theme only children there is a speaking task for the people that is uh, uh yes the speaking task for you people is for your uh, uh, for your assessment for asl uh, that is like uh, action speaks louder than words note this topic and you'll be speaking this topic for only 1 minute you'll be sending me your 1 minute videos upon the topic like action speaks louder than words so the theme of this very poem is this one i don't want you people to tell me the theme of this poem but, but i want you people to speak give your views on action speaks louder than your words okay action speak louder than words so this topic is meant for your speaking skills and listening skills will be conducting somewhere next week and in the listening skills you know i'll be sending you some video and some question i you will be solving that those question iers and you will be sending me their answers in the form of a pdf okay so this will be uh, asl will be for five marks and the poster is also we are assessing for five marks many students have already sent me the poster but students some students still they have not so kindly send me the poster on to stop cruelty to animals that was basically the poster uh, given on the theme of the poem animals right so do this today uh, at the earliest please send your work okay it's not that today only you have to send me the video you can take some time you can you can send your videos by next week today is saturday and by next friday you can send me on all. all of you can send your video on one minute only and uh, preferably send your video in your uniform okay so so as far as uh, the poems uh, poetic devices are concerned we can we'll discuss them on monday okay now test time is there and we won't be able to discuss so today you people go through the poem and uh, go through these questions also so so here is uh, the description of the poet okay then there is you know thinking about the poem so here are the comprehend this is the comprehension of the poem so go through these questions and write their answers we'll be discussing these answers on monday and we'll be discussing the poetic devices also so here is have fun writing a ballad so you write your own ballad write one more ballad from yourself gather information choose or decide an idea or theme organize your materials under characters and story and then write revise and edit your ballad to make it entertaining use the following guidelines to write your ballad so number 1 decide like what would be the purpose of writing the ballad to entertain and interest so what do you want the purpose of the ballad not just entertainment so this poem was so entertaining but at the same time this there is a big message also okay so this this kind of poem which appears to be so funny so entertaining even to small kids but in the end there is a message okay. so write this kind of ballad to whom am i am writing decide for whom are you writing yes very important thing when you will be writing the ballad then choose like who will be your target okay because the poem which we have done right now the ballad which we have read for whom was this poem i guess this was the poem for grown ups like us okay we have now there is a whatever the kinds of time always these, these things happen to be true how should i structure features tell a simple narrative a few major characters strong rhythm and rhyme may have a refrain okay repeated lines single or two line repeated often divide into verses so the ballads are always always divided into quatrains which are fully rhymed so so you have already read one best ballad one of the best ballads you read okay the all features you know now you are to draft one ballad from your own side write one ballad choose the right theme choose the right characters and all then write okay so this is very important and this is your write up this is your writing skill and it's also going to be assessed okay along with with the poster this also is to be sent okay but do it take your time and uh, i'm asking you people to send me this all work by next friday or saturday but these questions you have to write today okay would that be fine or not or are you annoyed yes 